I'm in a cabin in the woods, meditating about my upcoming move to Bali. I'm stressed out. I don't know if it's the right decision. I've sold almost everything. And I say to myself, Colleen, how bad can it be? I stop myself. How bad can it be? You're moving to Bali. How good can it get? I jump up and on a big piece of paper, I write, how good can it get? Underneath that heading, I started to write down things that would mean that my life was getting good. One of those things was make out with the sexy man. <laughs> Little did I know that was the beginning of a toured love affair. I had met Aaron a week before in contact improv dance, and he was sexy, witty, and playful. So I went back. He was there. We danced. Though we're not supposed to talk when dancing, I asked him, did I see you at dinner last night? He said, no, but quickly followed up with, maybe you're seeing the future. At that moment, Aaron gave me a gift. He put a ball in the game. Now, usually, because I'm not enough, I would not pick that ball up. But I had a choice to make. Was I going to continue being small and know myself as not enough, or was I going to be playful, sexy, and free? I chose the latter. Well, people do say I'm extremely intuitive. After dance, Aaron asked me, well, when do you want to go on a date? I said, well, it should be soon, because I'm leaving town in three days and the country in three weeks. That's one of the guidelines of a toured love affair. Someone should be leaving soon. <laughs> so he said, how about tonight? I said, fantastic. He told me a location to meet him in the restaurant, and we meet up. And I think to myself, oh, God, now we have to, like, have a conversation. I don't want to talk about the stress I'm under or what we do for work or our past relationships. I want to keep it sexy and fun and stay in the present moment. Another beautiful guideline of a toward love affair. So I think, what's going to make him feel good? I ask him, so... What are you passionate about? What turns you on? We start bantering back and forth, and the conversation gets very sexy. He finally leans into me and says, you just want to fuck, don't you? <laughs> now, I heard him loud and clear, but what came out of my, my mouth was, what? He got really shy and, and, and backed away. And I realized that my good girl conditioning was showing. And I wanted to recalibrate back to being sexy, fun, and free. So I lean in. Oh, no, I heard you. I just wanted to hear it again. <laughs> Even though I didn't answer his question, we both knew what was going to happen that night. So we started talking about how would we make it happen? Where would we go? What do we want to take place? Another beautiful guideline of a toward love affair, high level of communication. So we made our plan. He was going to come meet me back at my wooden cabin. We meet there. He comes back with music, candles, and binds one would use to tie someone up. I soon find myself in quite the compromising position. As I'm lying in bed tied up, he leans over me and he whispers in my ear, you're mine, no one else can have you. After the binds had been taken off and our session was done, I ask him, how did you learn about all this? He's like, actually, I've, I've never done it before, but I've always wanted to do it. Another beautiful guideline to a toward love affair, pushing your edges. He tells me about a time where he saw a Batman being tied up by Catwoman when he was a young boy and how it made him feel. The next night, I dress up as Catwoman. 
and I dance for him. And it's so edgy and so real and I feel crazy but so alive. He laughs and I jump on him and I push my hand down on his chest, call him Batman and tie him up and say, this is no laughing matter. You're mine. No one else can have you. When Batman was untied, he turns to me and he says, can I dance for you now? In awe, I'm like, yes. He gets up to dance. And I start to cry. Can it stay this innocent, this free, this playful? And again, I catch myself. And I say to myself, maybe it can. Maybe I am the one who dictates my life and I say how it goes and it can be this way forever just because I say so. I start to laugh with delight. He jumps on top of me and I look at him like he's the most amazing man in the world. He says to me, has anyone ever barked into your pussy? <laughs> you mean like a dog? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> oh, poor baby. As he goes down between my legs, the most masculine bark vibrations go up my body. And I think to myself, how good can it get? <laughs> <laughs>